my latest experiments with receiving have been with this very simple three transistor JS8 receiver on 80 meters. Using commonly available parts, it plugs into a laptop and allows reception of JS8 signals. It's direct conversion, so there's no suppression of the opposite sideband. Nevertheless, provided the band is quiet, you should be able to get signals from hundreds of kilometers away. For those not familiar with JS8, it's a digital mode similar to FT8. The difference is you can have keyboard to keyboard chats. So, in my view, it's more interesting. It so happens that the 80 meter frequency for JS8 is 3.578. That's the dial frequency and you set your equipment to upper sideband, unlike if you're using SSB for voice contacts. The outcome of that is that your transmitted signal is above the dial frequency by about one or two kilohertz. That 3.578 megahertz frequency is important as it makes construction of this receiver much simpler than otherwise. The receiver is about as simple as it can be. It's direct conversion with four main stages. The receiver's frequency is set by a signal that's generated locally within the receiver. That needs to be on 3.578 MHz, the center frequency that we mentioned before. The great thing about that center frequency on 80 meters is that it's very close to a commonly available crystal frequency. So instead of using a complex DDS VFO, you can just use a one transistor crystal oscillator for a stable result. 3.5795 is just one to half kilohertz above the 3.578 we need to be on. To pull the crystal down the required 1.5 kilohertz, I've made a crystal oscillator with two crystals in parallel, a variable capacitor, and two RF jokes. That allows me to shift the frequency down the required 1.5 kilohertz. Plus, the variable capacitor allows a small amount of frequency movement to get it exactly on frequency. Just adjusting the variable capacitor. We've discussed one part of the receiver, the local oscillator, what about the other parts? The other stages needed include a product detector, basically an RF mixer that converts radio to audio frequencies, and an audio amplifier that provides a little bit of audio boost to feed the computer's sound card input. You can see all this in the circuit. The incoming signal comes from the antenna. Ideally, it's a full-sized antenna like a dipole or G5RV is good enough. It goes through a ferrite broadband toroid and then to this diode mixer or product detector. That mixer has two inputs. One of them is the incoming signal and the other is the locally generated 3.578 megahertz signal from the local oscillator. You can see the local oscillator here, the two crystals in parallel. I do that to allow a larger pulling range because we don't want to be exactly on 3.579545. Instead we need to be about 1500 hertz lower. So to pull the frequencies down we have two inductors in series. Both are 22 microhenry. You may need to experiment with those in practice. And a variable capacitor that's also in series. That allows a small amount of variation around 3.578. Here's a one transistor RF oscillator at 3.578. That goes into a buffer stage, which provides some isolation and some amplification. You need isolation between a oscillator stage and subsequent stages so you don't get frequency pulling. And as I mentioned before, you do need the frequency to be stable. So the buffer is worth adding.
So having discussed the signal from the antenna and the signal from the local oscillator, they're both very close in frequency. The JS8 signal is on the upper sideband, one to half kilohertz above our center frequency. And we have our local oscillator signal on the center frequency. So the difference is an audio tone of around one to half kilohertz. That audio tone is tapped off from the third connection on the product detector and sent to a one transistor audio amplifier. The level of that is quite generous. So I've got a level control here, just a 5K potentiometer, and that connects to the computer's sound card input or microphone input. And then once the audio comes to the sound card, it's handled by the JS8 call software, which displays intelligence. So you get call signs, commands, if people are chatting to one another, then you can see that on your screen as well. There are a couple of limitations with this very simple receiver design. First of all, there's no front end selectivity. So if you are near a AM broadcast station, for instance, you might get some overload. If you want to test this receiver before connecting it to the computer, you can connect some high impedance headphones across the audio, and you'll be able to hear if there's any breakthrough from broadcast stations or not. If you do have breakthrough, is to fit some form of high pass filter or band pass filter on this connection, maybe an antenna coupler or transmatch that will also help to provide some selectivity. The other limitation is because this is a direct conversion receiver with no opposite sideband selection, if a signal appears a bit below, like 3.576 or 3.577, then you'll also be hearing it through. And there's a risk of that interfering with your reception of the desired JS8 signals. You can get around that, but it needs a more complicated arrangement, which I haven't bothered with. What if you wanted to monitor signals other than JS8? You could monitor FT8 or other modes. All you need to do is you need to find a way of setting the local oscillator onto a different frequency. You may be able to do that if you use something instead of a crystal like a ceramic resonator or a DDS VFO to get that extra frequency swing. Or even if you're a patient, add more inductors in series with the crystal and you may be able to swing it lower and get coverage of extra frequencies you need. This is a very simple lash up design, the antenna connection. This ferrite is a two hole type ferrite. Sometimes you see them in TV rabbit's ears antennas or ballon type formers or similar. You could use a toroidal type of transformer instead there are 10 turns of enameled copper wire, which you can get from an old transformer on the antenna side and four turns on the diode product detector side. Then over here is the local oscillator. The yellow things are the RF chokes. Yours might look a bit different. And that's one of the most important things when adjusting this receiver, making sure that your local oscillator is on exactly 3.578 megahertz and it's desirable that you have a transceiver that you zero beat the signal to be exactly on that frequency. There's two transistors here, the local oscillator and the buffer. Down here is our third transistor just for the audio amplifier. And right now I'm pointing to the potentiometer, a 5K pot, and that lowers the signal level to go into your computer. If you don't have a potentiometer, you could just make a voltage divider, say a 4.7K resistor in series with a 1K resistor or a 470 ohm resistor, something like that, that drops the output power low enough to be handled by the computer's sound card input. Otherwise, you might overload the program. There's a bar on the JS8 program that tells you if the signal level coming in is overloaded. So you just adjust the potentiometer so it's just before that. And another test that you do is you remove the antenna 
and the amount of signal being received should drop by say 20, 30, 40 decibels then you connect the antenna and you see the signal coming up even if there's no one actually transmitting it's just band noise that proves that this receiver is sensitive enough and as I mentioned before you could connect a pair of high impedance headphones across the output or a signal tracer or a bench audio amplifier just to double check that there is actually proper audio coming through and it's not breakthrough from broadcast stations or anything like that you just want to hear the band noise that you normally get on 80 meters in case you're wondering about the origin of the circuit a lot of it is from my Beach 40 40 meter double sideband transceiver I've simplified the audio amplifier it doesn't need as much gain because the computer is contributing quite a lot so that just needs to be one transistor and I'm using a crystal instead of a ceramic resonator just because the crystal happens to be very close to our desired frequency of 3.578 and potentially if you wanted to make this a JS8 transceiver I haven't tried it but I have done similar with other modes like whisper then you just need to apply audio from the sound card to this point on the product detector that makes it a balanced modulator and then you tap out the RF from this point it will be very low level so you need two or three transistors to give you maybe a watt that will be a double sideband signal so only one sideband will be useful but that should allow you to transmit on JS8 so if you did that you'd have a little box that you could plug into your laptop computer and you could have keyboard contacts with this simple arrangement if you wanted to make it more versatile you could have a DDS VFO then you could do the same thing for FT8 contacts and other digital modes I left this going for a couple of nights and there were some call signs picked up the furthest being VK5CZ around 600 700 kilometers away vk1 dc vk2 ahb both four to five hundred kilometers away and a couple of locals here in vk3 these are just people putting out heartbeats though there was a contact between some of these stations and to get details of that contact you can go into the js8 software and go to open log directory you need to look for a file called all it's a text document anyway when you do that you scroll down and you'll be able to see your history of contacts that have been monitored and down here is some text that I've been able to decode so to summarize this is a fun little receiver project doesn't cost much or take long to build but you'll soon be receiving JS8 contacts just with a laptop and this simple box